Hey everyone, this is Spencer, joined today by Nate Flax and Noah Longworth McGuire, also known as Sleeping Lion. How are you guys Hello. doing today? Hello, we're doing great. Hey, we're doing all right. So, for one, why don't you tell me a little bit about Sleeping Lion, how it came to be? So, Noah and I met at Berkeley College of Music, and we lived down the hall from each other. And we were sort of going down separate career paths. Like, we were friendly, but we didn't really know each other that well. I was looking more to do sound design for film. You were more in the music production. Yeah, just like songwriting and music production and various kinds stuff. of things. Um, and I was doing folk music kind of just like as a hobby. And one night, I was actually meeting up with my, my girlfriend at the time um, at a show. And I, I got into this conversation with this person outside of the show. And this person was a genius and was talking about like breaking into pop music and like all this stuff. And the person who gave that advice wound up being Halsey. And so I was like, oh, well, <laughs> it worked for her. Maybe right. we can give it a shot. So from there, Noah flew out to Rome, which is where his family lives. And I was in New York and we just remotely worked on a bunch of music inspired by what we were listening to, but also this sort of like fringe pop electronic that was happening at the time, which was somewhere between like, you know, Grizz and Brass Tracks, but then also like Lido and Jack Garrett, you know, and even the 1975 who, you know, had electronic elements despite being you know on paper a rock band you know but you know we started as a, like almost an experimental electronic band and as pop music moved more experimental and more electronic and we sort of started feeling like we were missing some of the heart that came from like you know folk music or you know that that sort of space i feel like we we kind of made me really found that was one of those starting points for you, right? Yeah, I mean that was our first song that was ever. Our first song. Yeah, but that's a that's a weird song. You made me love the sound of cars, the frozen pond we waited on. You and what we were actually experimenting with, you made me, was this like idea that we, you know, had chewed on of like complexity versus reward you know this idea of like oh well if you're gonna start a song in five you better drop it in four <laughs> you know right. um or yeah. if, or if you're gonna have this like crazy counterpoint you know in the bridge let it build in like just the nicest way um so yeah. it feels satisfying and, and, and sort of you know easy but but yeah i mean I, sort of all, all of this to say that we didn't necessarily go in with the intention of making pop music but that now yeah. it's like we're very much in the middle of it you made me For those of you who don't know, You Made Me is a, a song that an acapella group, which I was in, uh, did a cover of. And it was something that actually popped up on my chill mix on mm -hmm. Apple Music a few years back. And it, it just really struck a chord with me. And I was like, I, I got to write something for this. So it, it's definitely one of the um, arrangements I'm most proud of. Uh, well, we had really mixed feelings about the song, uh, you know, until we we heard your your arrangement like i think it, it took an acapella group on the other side of the country you know breathing sort of life into it for us to realize because we sort of saw like for a long time kind of viewed it as like first time try hard yeah like an experiment an experiment that didn't quite work yeah but i think i think i think what we realized in listening to your version is that we still wrote a good song. A song with heart. Because you guys, yeah. you guys, ref you know, you guys were really poking at the heart of it. Which yeah, I thought was really special. If you're gonna go, make sure that you heard me just enough to. How does somebody without much electronic music experience start working with that color palette and finding what is their sound? Um, well, I think the first thing I'm gonna say is like, for especially specifically for new people getting yeah. into it, I think that's like. There's a kind of magic to being new. There are truly no rules. I think that like You Made Me was my first attempt at making mm. electronic music. And I think that's part of what makes it special. I wasn't thinking about like, like how loud is this record going to be? Or like, is this drop as cool as Zed's drop? Like I wasn't like picking apart <laughs> like the like... I wasn't tweaking the knob on my serum patch, like obsessively being like, ah, oh, this the mid range of this synth needs to sound cooler, like getting really into the weeds of of, of synth sound design. I was just like, what have I uh, layered a bunch of like crazy synths, and I was just like was cycling through presets, like not even thinking about it, uh, like <laughs> printing stuff to audio, like that, like chopping up like violins and like layering them with synthesizers. Like it was a very, 
it, there, there was a, almost like a kind of childlike joy to just like I, I guess in a sense I've been playing electronic music for a lot longer than that because it, it was just cycling through logic presets and, and finding sounds that I liked I think that you just got to trust your sort of instinct mm. it's kind of a nebulous thing but I think you know when something sounds cool and I spend hours some, sometimes just as an activity something that I do is I just like go through Omnisphere presets and play them and and just mm. like play around you know just like f- try to find inspiration in a sound i think there's a really interesting relationship between a sound and the kind of musical ideas that it inspires and this leads me into the next thing that i kind of want to talk about is i've been really fascinated over the last year with how important arrangement is to music and how important it is whether it's a conscious intellectual you're practically writing stuff out on paper and being really conscious about your arrangement or you just have a really good sense for melodically and harmonically what you like Electronic music gives us access to a similar palette that like classical music composers were working with with an orchestra Mm -hmm. and the knowledge of a great orchestrator being able to say, I need a really delicate sinusoidal like piccolo line right here (laughs) to contrast Mm -hmm. this really chunky, thick harmonic cello line. Like those kinds of decisions are what are available to us as electronic composers. But like it's the same kinds of timbral decisions that people have been making for hundreds of years. So even though like technology has changed drastically, like we're still playing with the canvas that is the frequency spectrum. And I think that yeah. what's cool to me about electronic music is the level of control it gives us over the frequency spectrum and just allowing us to paint with all these different colors. But I think what's been really fun about the, the most recent kind of string of Sleeping Lion songs and going back to our folk roots and also like being inspired by, especially the last two Bonnie Vare records, is trying to find synth sounds and electronic like landscapes that have a beating heart to them, mm. that that still feel that they live in the same universe as a guitar. I think that there's a real skill okay. and a real like art to finding the quirks of electronic sounds that resonate in the same. And, and this is it's all it's it's very intuitive and very floating, and it's hard to like pin down like what specifically makes the synth sound at the beginning of Jailmore by Bonnie Vera like feel like it. It's breathing. It's breathing. Well, I, I think a big a big uh, sort of thing that we approached philosophically, too, that goes to what you were saying about arrangement is that at the end of the day, it really is just about intention and energy control. Yeah. Because, you know, the idea is you have an intention for whatever section of the song that you're at. Like, you want a line to hit. If you write a very poignant line that's going to break your heart, it better land like that. You know, if you want a chorus that you can sing to or dance to or cry to then that's that like you set your intention on there and then you have to make sure that your elements are building that up and and complementing that in a good way and then of course energy control is that too like you know if you want your drop to just absolutely smash you can't have the rest of the song before it also smash right you have to understand how chorus is like what what a chorus is doing um, from a writing perspective and from a production perspective and why a chorus works. Why does a drop work? And it always has to do with what's coming before and after it. So it's a lot about energy control and it's a lot about a lot about intention. And I think, you know, even even in our first record, we whenever we did like voice modulation, like whenever we did like a, like a vocoder, there was always an intention there too. Like vo- vocoders in our early record was meant to sim- symbolize like depression and anxiety. Like it was meant to symbolize a kind of, you know, um, like the multiple voices in your head kind of saying sort of darker things. And I think that since vocoders became like so, so overused and mainstream that we kind of moved away from that. But now now we're, we're approaching and we're, we're working on this in our, our upcoming record, gang vocals. And what's the intention? Yeah. And what's the intention mm-hmm. for gang vocals? Well, obviously, it's to elevate a certain part, but it's also okay. Well, if this record's going to be angry, angrier, how do we how do we uh, you know reflect the anger that's there? And in that, it's like it's like an angry mob in your head. You know, it's <laughs> like it's like mul- multiplying yourself. Um, you know, so you have that anger. So so a lot of our decisions, you know, come from obviously like arrangement stuff, but also some of it comes from intention of like okay, well, h- how does this hurt more? How does this How does this really, really hit? You know, I think Butterflies is a good example of that. Like, that song is really, really delicate. So we're not going to have a drop. We're going to have it be cello elements and, and atmospheric elements and really airy vocal elements. I know I'm inviting So new and exciting When you don't know me at all But what's gonna happen? Will we lose our momentum? 
Thank you both so much for joining me today. Is there anything that you would like to share that you think I missed or would have wanted covered? Any final word to aspiring, you know, electronic musicians? I got two things. I mean, I think as far as we're concerned, like we hope you like us. We hope you listen to our music. You know, <laughs> I hope you listen. Like, if you want to really like hear a whole bunch of people talking about like the the you know the inner workings of their songs, we got this podcast, Talking Lion. Where not only do other artists dive into their songs, but every song we've released, we actually go through our stems and our voice memos to really talk about how we got from start to finish with it. So if you're really interested in getting in the weeds on our stuff, like and with other artists' stuff, uh, check out Talking Lion. I think the two things that are most important is Noah touched on this. The first is just really develop your taste. Like be honest with yourself about the quality of your work. It's okay to not be good. It's okay to know what that sounds like because that's part of the process. And so, you know, being honest with yourself and being honest with your taste and your taste is always going to be developed by what you listen to. Now, I'm not saying listen to pop music and and exclusively pop music and have that be because you're like I say our edge is that our taste is as much informed by current pop music as it is by pop punk from the mid 2000s and, you know, Sondheim. Yeah. But you know, understanding what you're listening to is going to give you a better idea of what kind of resonates with you and, and, and resonates with the palette that you're trying to build. So much of my conversations with Noah about how a song could be better is just referencing other songs and she's being like, oh, well, like how that guitar feels in the mix, that's what we need, you know, that kind of thing. So that's the first thing. The other yeah. thing is please look around the room, you know, right now. Look around the room at the people who are around you because you don't know who in this room is going to be your best collaborator because you're not going to find what you're looking for out in the world if you're not already opening yourself up to a collaborative spirit and this idea that anybody who's around you can change your life. You know, even this conversation is like, you know, because somebody heard our music, but also because I wanted to make a point of knowing the person who would be interested enough to make an acapella arrangement of our music that strikes me as the kind of person uh my life will only be better for knowing and so far spencer you have not proven me wrong so it's very important <laughs> to keep yourself open to that kind of stuff because you never you really really never know what about you know yeah i think electronic music and the tools of electronic music are exactly that like uh they're just tools you know the synthesizer and the the vocal chop and uh all of these things that are available to us as electronic composers are just additional tools in the palette of what it means to be a composer. And I think that it's important to, it's at least important to me to be a student of music as a whole and, and yeah, take as much influence as, you know, I, I feel like I get as inspired listening to like Disney string arrangements or the string arrangements on Frank Sinatra mm -hmm. records as I do listening to yeah. New Music Friday. And I think that that's because my view on music i try to be open-minded about what inspires me and, and and what what gets me excited and i think that it all filters into each other and i think just being excited about music as a as a medium in its entirety will make you a better musician and will uh make your music more uh flavorful yeah yeah i like that well you've heard it here <laughs> first folks sleep in line thank you both so much for joining me today i appreciate it sure. Guess it's my fault for figuring out what I did wrong too late to undo it. Sure, I shouldn't have said what I said in front of your friends while I was out being stupid. But I thought I was smart once till it broke my heart. Once